All right, there we go. Welcome to deconstructing our dinner plate and just really understanding what the heck you should have on it, how to feel really confident about what you do put on your dinner plate, and most of all, how to really truly inspire you to make really simple changes that allows you to just feel awesome and and really have that guidance and assurance that you're doing the best thing you possibly can for your body. So my name is Kara, and I am the host of the Vancouver Women Paleo Meetup. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please head on over to Meetup and join us there. I'd love to have you in our community. And I'm a holistic nutritionist by trade. Uh, I absolutely love food. I'm a big foodie, and I'm also a certified pastry chef. And I have some schooling in cell biology and genetics as well. And that's a little bit of my background along with, of course, uh, nutrition school where I really got to learn the, the nuts and bolts of how the human body really utilizes food and how you can really truly use food as medicine. So today we are going to be talking about really deconstructing our dinner plate and a really really simple way to take charge of your health and understand a little bit more of what is this paleo thing, how do women need to be mindful of when they're eating more paleo-ish, and just really how to support our bodies to be at the right weight and to feel confident and sexy and perform better at the gym and just overall have more energy, have better skin, really just, you know, have better health and more joy and more happiness and all the great things that come with that as well. So I just invite you to take a moment, take a deep breath, just relax and kind of take away all the stuff from your day and whatever else you may be doing. Close the extra browsers. We're going to be together for about 35 minutes today. And I really encourage you just to spend this time and focus focus on yourself because it really is an investment in you and your health. And you can always reach me via email or on my website at nourishsoulfully.com and I'll post some stuff below too. So really, how do you have more confidence in eating a paleo style diet? And first, what the heck is paleo for any of you newbies out there? So paleo is a style of eating that focuses on fruits and vegetables, uh, nuts and seeds, great quality animal products. And what it does not include are grains, dairy, legumes, and refined foods and refined sugar. So that's kind of the nuts and bolts of what is paleo. But my style of paleo is really focused on whole food eating and real food eating. Because let's be real, that's what our body needs. Our body is wired as if it was 100,000 years ago. And that's, that's so much time I can't even possibly conceive it. But at the same time, we really need to focus on a whole food approach of what our body is meant to eat. And I really believe that a paleo style diet is what provides that for us. So with, of course, you know, just some common sense, I don't know, changes or adjustments, because like I said last time, and I did verify this, that Oreos are actually vegan. So there is no dairy in an Oreo. So if you think about the cream filling not so not so creamy but you can really you can eat any diet and it can be a poor style diet and i see that with anything under the sun so we're just focusing on a really whole food style of eating and the key to this and the key to being successful and i say this all the time i just came off of teaching an amazing three-day course and it's really simplicity and that is the key and what you need to do in order to change your health is make incremental changes And I really do mean incremental. And I work with a lot of amazing women who are go-getters and they're really driven and they really want to, you know, just do it all at once. But unfortunately, that's just not the way to do it. You really need to take incremental changes and then it should feel like an easy win. So the changes you're making, they should feel easy, which is awesome because that just means that healthy is easy and delicious and phenomenal. So just remember to keep things as simple as possible and you know what you need to change in your health. And I I challenge you to do that first thing that comes to mind when I ask you, what do you need to do to change your health? What's one simple thing that maybe takes you two to five minutes in a day to do? And I challenge you to do that every single day for the next 66 days. And the reason why I say 66 is because that's the new, I don't know, that's where the new data is. Uh, I think some college in in the UK did a study that that's actually how long it takes us to create a habit. It's not, 
It's not 21 days. It's not 42 days. It's 66 days. So commit to that little thing for 66 days and it has to be consecutive days. That is the trick. So I just really want to encourage you to take that thing that you thought about, write it down right now and then commit to it. And it can really be as simple as that. But by the end of this webinar, then we'll definitely, you'll be walking away with a few ideas as well of where to start with that. So simplicity is the key. If you cannot, oh, sorry, I'm just checking out. Hi, Jenka. Just give me one second as I see if people can hear me. Hmm. Okay, so thank you, Juliana, for getting back to me about the sound. There we go. Thanks, guys. Sorry about that. So we're good. So if the sound is kind of funny, um, the recording will be available. So I was just saying my, my key is really keep it simple. And that's really a key to changing things. But how do you change your diet? And we're going to be talking about that. And what I want to share with you, I'm going to do a little screen share in a second here, and I'm going to show you my anatomy of a dinner plate. And this I really want to dive into. And it's something that if you were at the Paleo 101 webinar, or 101, 101, the Paleo 101 webinar, that is what Dove just touched on a teeny, teeny bit, this idea of our dinner plate and what it should look like. So if you do get into the Paleo world, you see a lot of people talking about macros and their carbs and all of this kind of stuff. And you don't need to to worry about that at first. You just want to keep it simple. What are the changes that you are going to make that are sustainable? Because it's all about those little incremental changes that turn into habits. And then that just creates our, our, our entire lives and our health is created by our habits. And someone who is overweight has very different habits than a marathon runner. And, you know, there's just so many different habits that we do and that we don't do. And I actually had a really inspiring call with a client last week. And one of the things that he said to me was, I know that I have the power to choose what goes in my mouth. And that is a huge thing. And if you really get that, that's amazing. So you just want to be really mindful about that. And you can really understand that simple things is really what's going to help you succeed. So I'm going to take one second and I'm going to share my screen with you. And I do ask that if you are in here, that you mute yourself. Thank you. So let me share my screen. And then, so this is my anatomy of a dinner plate. And I'll exit out in this in a second, just to make sure you guys can see me. But this is really, so this is your dinner plate or your meal plate rather. And this is the anatomy of it. So the first biggest section is obviously, I don't know, it's pretty obvious. It's definitely not rocket science. What it is, is it's veggies. And one thing you may have not heard before is that I recommend that you only have two or three types of veggies per meal. And I used to be the queen of a 50 ingredient stir fry. I would have every vegetable under the sun that was in my fridge. It would go in all of my food. So all of my salads were the same. My stir fries had every single veggie that I possibly could pack into it. And what I learned over time is that actually impacts your digestion in a really negative way. So if you think about a pear and you think about an apple, even though they're in the same family kind of, um, maybe that wasn't the best example, if you think about a celery and a carrot, those two things are in the same family, but our body still has to treat them differently in order to digest them. So when you put 15, 20 different ingredients in something, which honestly I see a lot of healthy people do. So I see people have green smoothies with 20 different ingredients or you know whatever it may be with just way too much. And that does overwhelm our digestive system. So it's really important to keep it simple. And I always say that green veggies like lettuce, 
lettuces, those are a free food. So you can do lettuces and then have two or three types on top of that. So what that looks like is if you're doing a salad, have say mixed greens with fennel, onion, and celery. And then the next time you could do your mixed greens and then you could do carrots, red pepper, and onion. And that's just something... And it, it really keeps it that simple. And doesn't that sound like that was just two completely different salads? So that's a great way to increase variety. And really with this style of paleo eating, we're focusing on real whole foods. So you want about half of your plate to be veggies. And the more colorful, the better. And if you think like, oh, I don't know, that's a lot of veggies, just start slow and eat things that you already enjoy. And then be a little adventurous and try new cooking methods, especially um, things like kale. If you don't like kale, try cooking it in a different way. Next one is protein. So this is a quarter of your plate. So protein, you want it to be about the size, so the thickness and the width of your palm. So we kind of have measuring cups on our hands, which is pretty neat. And one of the biggest misconceptions about paleo is that it's a high protein diet. And that's false. So the best way to actually eat a, a paleo style diet or the one that at least I subscribe to is you want to keep it moderate protein. You want to do an abundant amount of veggies and you want to do a high amount of fat. So we'll, t we'll get into those other pieces in a second. But the protein, it's a moderate protein diet. It should not be a high protein diet. And if you're a numbers person, for women, it's about 1 to 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight is your daily kind of number. And if you are an athlete, then you can go up a little bit more if you, if you work out quite intensely or if you compete. But generally, it's that 1 to 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight is your daily protein requirement. So it's not as much as some people think. And you want to make sure it's good quality protein. So I just say that wherever you are now, whether you're, you know, if you're buying your meat at Superstore or at Costco, take it up one step and then choose antibiotic free meat. And if you're doing that, then go to organic meat. And the ideal is what you want to be doing is grass fed and finished meat or pastured meat. And that's really, I mean, that's really, it makes such a, it makes such a huge difference. And I'm going to talk about why in just a minute, but I really encourage you all the animal products that you do choose to include butter, all of your fish should be wild. Um, one of the few things that I will not put in my body is farmed salmon. That's something that is just, I know too much maybe about it, but there's things like dyes and flame retardants and PCBs in your farmed salmon. So it's just, it's not, it's not a good quality food. So just be mindful about your animal products and where they're coming from. And in Vancouver, we have such a, a blessing of having so many different resources. And I'll post some below this video as well of where you can get really great quality meat that's not more expensive. So there are really ways to kind of be mindful of budget when you're talking about great quality proteins. And just let me exit out of here. And we seem like we're all good. Awesome. All right, thanks guys for your patience with this. So moving on to our next quarter, starches and grains. So this category is one that you wanna play with maybe the most, and this is the one that paleo does play with the most. So the starches uh, that are safe starches according to paleo, which some of this is kind of a little bit, I don't know, Google paleo safe starches if you want to read more. But essentially you wanna focus on things like sweet potatoes uh, and yams are fantastic. Buckwheat is actually a seed, so there's no wheat, it's a terrible name. There's no wheat, it's um, just a seed actually. So there's no wheat, no gluten, and it's not a grain. It's a seed. Wild rice is also a seed. It's not a grain. So that's another option that you can do. Some people say potatoes are okay. I think they're a little bit too high, maybe in sugars with not enough uh, nutrient density. But those are looking at your safe starches. And then things like cassava root and plantain and uh, tapioca sometimes as well. So there are different starches that are in the paleo world that are safe. And another one is actually white rice. And white rice is a grain, but white rice is a fantastic, really easy to digest source of carbohydrates. And yes, I am a nutritionist and I am recommending that you eat white rice and not brown rice because essentially the nutrient profiles of brown rice and white rice are the exact same. And brown rice, what it has on it, it has anti-nutrients. And what that means is that brown rice has things that actually can impair your digestion. They're not great for your gut lining. It's really scratchy. Uh, and it really actually 
prevents nutrient absorption in the other foods that you eat at the same time as that, as that rice. So choose white rice. And especially if you are athletic or you work out, have that white rice as, your, as part of your post-recovery uh, or during your post-recovery period. So not necessarily for your post-recovery uh, meal, but have it for that main meal after you have your recovery shake usually. It happens to be. Uh, and the reason why I really kind of fell into this, and I realized that I've been recommending a similar style of eating to this for years, and I just didn't put a label to it. Because for one, I really don't believe in labels. I think that people ask me how I eat all the time, and I just tell them that I eat a whole food great diet, or I say I eat what I choose to. Like there really is no one way. And I very strongly believe there's no one right diet for anyone all the time. So there's no one right diet for anyone all the time. So just chew on that one a little bit. But with starches and grains, the thing that really kind of kicked me in the butt was just learning about the damaging effects of inflammation. And now I am so passionate about inflammation and it's something that we all need to actively reduce because everyone, and I very rare, I very rarely, listen to me talk, I very rarely use blanket statements like that. But if you are living in, let me actually, let me put it this way. If you are not living off the grid, growing all of your own food, hunting your own wild game, uh, you, you know, drink water from a stream and you're essentially living away from modern society. If that does not describe you, then you have inflammation that needs to be dealt with. And I always talk about inflammation um, and I use an analogy of links on a chain. So if you can imagine a whole bunch of links on a chain, and each one of those links is a different system in your body. So one might be your digestive system, another might be your cardiovascular system, another might be your brain, another might be your pancreas. And what happens over time is we are under chronic inflammation, which is not the good kind. And inflammation is one of those things that we need it to be alive. Acute inflammation is very protective and it's an amazing response in our body. But what happens is over time, when it becomes chronic because of the amount of toxins that we're exposed to, just through living in a city, through personal care products, through non-organic foods, through breathing in air, through, I mean, even think about it, right now in Vancouver, there's crazy forest fires and we have had a lot of smoke. So just breathing in that is a source of toxins and our bodies are just absolutely bombarded with these toxins that it can't keep up with and that causes a high level of inflammation and the one way that we can control inflammation is through diet so we really have the control on our dinner plate and this is one of the reasons why I believe that we really need to be a lot more mindful about the starches and grains that we do eat. Because let's face it, the average person eats an astronomical amount of starches and grains way, way too much. Like I would venture that three quarters of this plate would be starches and grains for your average person. Because when you think about it, you have toaster cereal for breakfast, you have a granola bar as a snack, you have a sandwich for lunch, you have a cookie or something in the afternoon, you have pasta for dinner and then cake for dessert. Every single thing of that is a starch and grain. And what happens in our body is even when it's healthy stuff, so even like a banana, um, that what happens is that spikes your blood sugar. And one of the ways that we spike inflammation in our body is by imbalanced blood sugar. So grains really do wreak havoc on our blood sugar. And by doing that, it causes a lot of inflammation. And another thing that really doesn't have to do with food, but has a ton to do with inflammation is stress. And that just happens to be one of my areas of, I don't know, interest or areas that I love and love to work with is stress, especially with women, because it just, it really can cause a ton of inflammation in the body. And what we think and how we, you know, a lot of our self-talk will cause stress and our bodies are really an amazing, amazing thing. And it's trying to protect us with our stress response, but unfortunately it just can't differentiate between, you know, doing a workout or our boss yelling at us or our kids frustrating us. And that's something that causes a lot of stress, which causes inflammation. So just by reducing your stress, you can do wonders for your health. So starches and grains, I say optional, and I say optional, especially after 3 p.m. And the reason why, sorry, I'm just going to hop in here. And if you join, if you could mute yourself, that would be wonderful. I'm just trying to see if I can find Oh, Sorry, so if you are not muted, can you please unmute yourself?
there we go. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Sorry, guys, as people are hopping in, they're getting unmuted. All right, so let's go back to the screen. All right, so the reason why I say after 3 p.m. and starches and greens being optional is because of that inflammation. So you can play around with this. And as women, we do not, we cannot cut out starches completely. We do need to keep carbohydrates in our diet. And we can get that through a variety of different ways. But what that looks like for most people is, you know, unlimited veggies, please do not count your veggies. And this is really not about counting your food or counting your macros or, or staying at a, like, you know, 105.4 grams of carbs a day. That's just, that's not where we're coming from, but you want to be mindful. So you have maybe a cup of rice during a day, and then you have an abundant amount of veggies, uh, you know, a moderate amount of protein and a lot of healthy fat. And that's what would be a reasonable amount of carbohydrates or starches for a woman. So we want to make sure that we're eating enough starches and grains, but just keeping it moderate compared to what I mean, the norm in society is. And the reason why I say after 3 p.m. is optional is because really, what do we need carbohydrates for? Our body uses them for energy. So do you really need a lot of energy at 8, 8 p.m. before you go to bed? No, you don't. So using those in the morning or post-workout is a really fantastic way to incorporate them. And there is some more timing, uh, timing intricacies we can get into at another time to just really help your body optimize with those starches and grains. And that helps uh, with weight loss and lean muscle mass as well. So my favorite section now is the healthy fat. So we, again, if you make an okay sign with your fingers, we have that beautiful serving size, which is the, the space if you make the okay sign with your pointer finger and your thumb that circle is going to be about one serving of fat for you. And you should have that with every meal. And that's generally about two to four teaspoons of fat per serving. And or you can increase. And fat is something that we have gone through this complete fat phobic range, which has absolutely, I mean, wrecked our health in, in my opinion. And it has done nothing, nothing good by restricting our fat or going low fat or no fat because we just add sugar in that. And guess what causes a ton of inflammation? Sugar. So replacing fat with sugar and carbohydrates has really done a lot of damage to our health. And we need fat for so many reasons. We need it for mental clarity. We need it to, like, for energy. We need it for healthy skin. We need it for a healthy cardiovascular system. We need it for mood. Our brain is 75% fat. It's a huge number. And actually, we need fat in order to lose weight. So that might seem a little bit con conflicting. You need fat to lose weight. And like I said, our bodies are brilliant. It's so, our bodies are so smart. And especially as women's bodies, we're really sensitive to the signals that we're sending our bodies. So the level of stress that we're under is one. And second is what we're eating. So when we're eating very low fat diets, we're sending a signal to our body saying that there's a famine and there's a food shortage and you need to hold on to every calorie because or else we won't be able to survive. And that might sound melodramatic, but it's true in the way that our bodies are wired. But when you eat a, a, a diet in abundant in healthy fats, and what I mean by healthy fats, so quality here is paramount. What I mean by healthy fats are organic, ideally pastured butter, organic coconut oil, raw nuts and seeds, avocados, unheated olive oil. I don't believe you should cook with olive oil. Think if you have a dairy allergy or you just, I don't know, ghee is a great alternative if you want if you have a dairy sensitivity or if you just wanted an alternative source of fat, ghee is a fantastic option as well. And then things like eggs and, and you know, the fats that are naturally in proteins and meats and that kind of stuff. So healthy fats are so imperative and we need to all be eating more of them. And there's this kind of dance that our body does between our carbohydrates and between fat. And what it does is that as we decrease our carbohydrates and starches and grains and increase our fat, that, that tells our body that we're in a really rich environment and that we have plenty of food and that things are safe. So what our body will do is it will naturally release that extra stored fat because we don't need it. And our bodies will start to function better on an overall basis. So hormones balance, which means we get better sleep, we have more energy, we have a better mood, more patience, we're happier, we're more joyful. And our athletic, you know, we kind of maybe you feel like you want to exercise if exercise is not the usual thing for you. Or maybe you notice that your body 
is able to do more in the exercise that you choose to. So fat is such an important thing to increase. And now don't, if you don't have a lot of fat in your diet now, don't go to town on it because you will make yourself sick. And if you're scared of eating too much fat, I always say the body has a really beautiful feedback system when it comes to fat. And if you imagine trying to eat a stick of butter, which is, oh, I can feel your gag reflexes going on, then you know that it's really hard to overeat fat. And in fact, uh, doing something like caveman coffee, I've made myself really nauseous because I had too much fat too fast. And that was just, I mean, my body was telling me a lesson. All right, we're going to hop out of that. So with fat, like I said, my body was definitely telling me a lesson at some points when I was actually eating too much at once. But that was a lot. That was probably like five tablespoons at one time. But I just want to encourage you that fat is such an important thing to include in your diet and just do it however you want to. Um, and cooking, this is always a question I get, so I'll address it. Cooking should be exclusively with butter and coconut oil. Or if you have like bacon fat that's a great qual from a great quality animal, then that can be okay too. But exclusively butter, coconut oil, ghee, you should only be cooking with saturated fats and that's because they stay healthy when you heat them and other fats including olive oil they will denature or become oxidized which is not a good thing to be putting in your body so those are just some things to think about when it comes to fat and I love fat, eat more of it. And actually I figured out, so I taught a course on the weekend and I figured out how many I generally eat. For me, I have a pretty high fat diet and low, lower carbohydrates, moderate protein. That's the way that I feel best. And I really encourage you just to play around with that. How much fat and how much carbs, where do you feel best? And a lot of the reason why we tend to gain weight as well is when we spike our blood sugar and then we add in a lot of fat or a lot of calories. So that's a great way to signal our body to store fat is spiking our blood sugar and then having a lot of a great source of energy available. So if weight gain is not your goal, then be mindful of that balance of the fats and the carbohydrates. And like I said, do not get into the counting veggies thing. Um, just look at the starches and grains that you are eating or cut down on those grains or go grain free for two weeks and see what happens. But you do increase your healthy fat because people say, again, I'll get back to my point in a second. I love tangents. Um, people say, well, how do I feel full on this? Like, how do I feel full? And we're so used to that like bowl of oatmeal feeling in our stomach that you get kind of this bolus, like gross, I don't know, kind of just like sludgy feeling in your tummy. And that's what we're used to. That's what we're used to understanding as full. And that's not actually a full. That's a different kind of full. So as you're switching to a more paleo or more kind of just quality whole foods diet, you will feel different when you're full. And that just takes some time and some just self-awareness really for how you're feeling. And if you are truly hungry one to two hours after you eat, then you need to be eating more protein and more fat with your meal that you, that you had beforehand. So just experiment with those amounts. And the thing that helps us feel the most satisfied is fat. So that's a a fantastic thing to include is more fat, and that's really what helps help keeps you helps keep you full. <laughs> Sorry, and if you go back to that dinner plate and you're looking at taking out those starches and carbohydrates, or you're just you know you're limiting it, what do you replace it with? Fat. So you just add more fat on. And that dinner plate is not supposed to be um, your macro ratios. That is an actual visual rep representation of what a meal plate can look like. And at the beginning, do that. Start to put out your plate and then have that. Make Fill it up like that. And that's really my super, super easy meal formula. And honestly, that's how I cook at home most of the time. I think about what do I love or what do I want to try? And then I have half my plate of veggies. I have some protein and I have a healthy source, source of starch if I do and healthy fat. So a really common meal in my house is something like lemon roasted kale with bison and maybe some sweet potato covered in olive oil and butter. Um, what else? Today, my dinner was really boring today, sorry. But uh, the example was I had some wild salmon over a salad and I put a lot of dressing on there with olive oil and um, I'm gonna have some dessert later, which is some raw chocolate, uh, which is a lot of healthy fat. And that's something that um, 
I don't know, just include more of. So to give you an example, back to my original point about how much fat I eat. So generally, I average on about 130 to 140 grams of fat a day. Now, I don't log my food all the time. This is just from me checking in every so often to see where I'm at. And I had my partner, Derek, figure out how much, like what quantity of fat is that actually. So if you're thinking about coconut oil, 130 to 140 grams of coconut oil is about two thirds of a cup every day. So, and, and let me be completely transparent. I used to be terrified of putting on a teaspoon of fat to my food. So the fact that I'm having the equivalent to two thirds of a cup every day, I think is awesome. Um, and I feel fantastic and my health is really getting better and better and it's better than it ever has been. And the fact that I'm sharing this with clients in my nutrition practice and just really getting to see some real world results around eating like this. And actually that's what I'll share. So I have a couple amazing clients that I've been working with since January and her family sorry these headphones are not the best um, her family it really just subscribed to this dinner plate idea and she has two teenage boys and what they did was they just said like essentially would Kara say okay to this and they followed the dinner plate and so since January she has lost 40 pounds and looks freaking phenomenal and she is eating more fat and more veggies and good quality animal products than she ever has which is fantastic I'm telling you that you can have steak with a butter sauce with asparagus and you know maybe a nice glass of wine and then that's a healthy healthy meal um, so she lost 40 pounds. Her husband lost 65 pounds since January. She actually came in, we were working together online. So I had never, I hadn't actually seen them before this weight loss. So I've met them since. So I don't know their before picture. And she actually brought me in a picture of her husband when he was at one of his heaviest weights. And it's incredible how much he's changed. And it's just so inspiring. And it's all while eating healthy whole foods that are very easy to prepare and that are fast. So just take that dinner plate kind of formula and do like the, you know, 50% veggies, 25% protein, 25% good starches, or amp that up with the fat. And then it's just, it's a beautiful way to eat and it keeps things so, so simple. And I mean, if you're looking for recipe inspiration, I think that paleo is something that regardless of what I'm making, I look for recipe inspiration in paleo, uh, in the paleo online world, because you can always add, you know, cheese to it. And then it's not technically paleo, or you can add rice to it. And then it's not technically paleo. I think we just need to get away from the labels and eat what our body really intuitively wants, because we all know what's good for us. And we know what's new and we know what isn't. So it's just really a matter of honoring that and having fun with your food and understanding that it should not feel stressful or hard or gross or any of that stuff. It should feel good and it should be really delicious and amazing, which, which really food can be. So with that, I want to wrap up and just say that thank you guys for being here and for investing in yourself because I know you value your health because you're taking the time to learn and that's such an inspiration. And please reach out to me. You can contact me, like I said, on my website, nourishsoulfully.com or info at nourishsoulfully.com is my email. Please reach out with questions. I am so happy to be an open resource. Um, thank you for being a part of this amazing community. And the next meetup that I'm going to do, uh, or webinar rather, that I'm going to do is all going to be around women and paleo. So what are those actual things that we need to be mindful of that are very common in the whole paleo world, but just don't work for women? So things like intermittent fasting around exercise and hormone balance. So I'm really excited to uh, explore that more with you guys. If there is an area that I can help serve you and that you're curious about, please either comment in the group or reach out to me. I'm so happy to answer questions and just know what information uh, that you're looking for more of. So have a really beautiful evening. Thank you so much and good luck on your paleo adventures. Good night, guys.